If you struggle with music theory, but you'd still like to be able to play beautiful chords like these, then watch this video all the way to the end. I promise you're gonna get a lot of value out of it. In fact, I'm gonna cram so much into this video, you might wanna watch it more than once to let everything sink in. Now that I've built this up, let's dig in. So how do you make a chord anyway? Well, chords are made up of notes. Notes played in a certain order are scales. All the chords that we're working with today are made up of notes within the major scale. And they are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it repeats up to the eighth note, which is the octave. So for instance, you've got an E chord, which is comprised of an E, the fifth note of the scale, which is a B, an octave E, the major third, which is a G sharp, and then another B and E. Breaking and entering. Now you can find all of those notes if you just walk through the major scale. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octave. That's where the scale starts over again. Now, if an E major is only those three notes, an E, a B, and a G sharp, if we add one more note to it, that's where things start to get really interesting. So in this case, we're going to be adding the second note of the scale, which is an F sharp. But we're gonna add it above the octave, E, this F sharp right here. So this becomes an E add nine. So we're just replacing this octave E with a F sharp, which at that point is then the ninth note of the scale. Sounds pretty good, right? Now let's try that with another chord. Let's try it with an A. So you've got an A is comprised of an A, a C sharp, and an E. Here's an A, here's an E, Here's an A again, here's a C sharp, and then another E. So then to make this an A add nine, all we have to do is take that octave and introduce a B to it. So now we've got the A add nine chord. So with any major chord, all you're really doing is stacking thirds from one to five. What the heck does that even mean? Well, a third is an interval. An interval is simply a measurement between one note and another. So you've got the major third interval. For an A chord, you've got the note A. Then you've got the note C sharp. To make it a minor third, you just bump that down one semitone. The reason this is an A major add nine chord and not an A major nine is because it doesn't have the presence of the seventh note in the scale. To make an A major nine, you have to stack thirds all the way from one to nine. And by stacking thirds, I mean you're taking all of the odd numbers. So one to three, three to five, five to seven, seven to nine. And I'm just saying thirds right here because depending on where they are in the scale, that might be a major third or a minor third. I know it's a lot, but bear with me. If we keep the seventh note of the scale in there, in this case, that's a G sharp. If we add that to the chord, we get this. Equally beautiful for sure, but it's got a little bit of tension that you might not always want. And that's the presence of the seventh note in the scale. So again, an A major nine would look like this. And an A major add nine would look like this. So if you want to turn a major chord into an add nine chord, all you have to do is find that second note of the scale and then introduce that somewhere above the octave. So you could take a G chord and then add in an A right here. And now it's got that lovely add nine quality to it. I'm sorry if that got super complicated. Let's talk about something way easier than that and something I use even more often. And that's two chords. Psst, real quick, wanna let you in on something. This Joyful Noise t-shirt that I'm wearing is actually the first collaboration between Getting Better With Dave and Feather Fits, which is actually my wife's clothing design company, but don't tell anybody. 
I'm super excited about how these turned out. The t-shirts fit the way I expect them to. They're super soft. If you want to pick one up for yourself or a loved one, check out the link in the description and grab one while they're still available. All right, enough about that. Let's get back to the chords. Let's talk about sus2 chords. So two chords oftentimes get called sus2s because they have sort of a suspended quality to them, much like a sus4. In this case, all we're doing is removing the major third and moving that either forward or backward. So in the case of like a D major, you've got the D major played like this. To make it a sus2, you would drop the major third, which is this note here, that's an F sharp. And that turns it into a D sus2, sometimes just referred to as a D2. I love these chords because they have a lot of power to them, and because it doesn't have the major third in it, uh, the major third sometimes can be difficult to sound in tune, or if you're even a little bit out of tune, that major third is gonna make you sound super out. So if you're ever having trouble keeping a guitar in tune, maybe think about using two chords instead of major chords. So if we're doing that with an A chord, all we're gonna do is play an A. And then here's our major third here. That's a C sharp. And we're just gonna drop that back down to a B. I use these all the time. Now you might be saying to yourself, Dave, I already know about A2 and I already know about D2, and I know about G2, and G2 is this shape, right? And in fact, it's not a G2. It's technically a G5. So if you've got the major third here in a G chord, which is a B note, if you turn that into a C note, this becomes a suspended chord. That's the fourth note in the scale. So then if you bring that up to a D note, that technically makes it a G5. In order to make it a G2, we would have to move that major third down a full step or two semitones. So if it's a B, we need to bring that B down to an A. So then this right here is technically a G2. I've been playing a G5 for years and all the while calling it a G2. My apologies to anyone I misled along the way. Now you might be yelling at the screen at this point, but I like the G5 better. Perfect. Let's take that same concept and let's transfer that to other chords. So let's take an E for instance. If you've got an E chord, if we move that major third up two more degrees of the scale, we go from this G sharp, A, up to another B. So this is an E5 chord. The fun thing about five chords is they're actually only made up of two notes. That's the root and the fifth. So you've got E, B, E, B, B, E. Let's apply that same logic to a D chord. So here's a D chord. D sus, D five. All that is is different octaves of the notes D and A. lot of power in the five chords. All right, so that's enough about chords for one day. Put all of these things into practice. And according to YouTube's analytics, over 80% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So do me a favor, subscribe down below. Don't forget to check out the link for the t-shirt, but more importantly, until next time, keep getting better.